Hi, I'm TJ. Who do we have here? Hey, Finn. Hey, Finn. Hey, buddy. Good job staying down. Uh -huh. Good jumping. Good. Good boy. <laughs> He usually, he usually has a problem with that. Uh, we've been working on it. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's been doing good. So he doesn't know how to greet him. Huh? He'll, uh, he'll jump off. You know, he'll just get really excited. OK. He hasn't gotten to that No, no problem. I'll go for a walk so with I'm you. I'm Mary. How are you? Hi. This is my <laughs> daughter, Natalie. Hi. I'm TJ. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What I'll do is I'll, I'll walk with you guys. We'll let him go to the bathroom, and we'll try to showcase Anything that you need worked on. Uh, I know sometimes that's easier said than done with some pups. Oh, there we go. And then we'll just run a couple uh, baseline tests to see how he is. Oh, wow. He's going to get along great with the other pups. It's too, it's too bad that Penny is leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Aw. Well, we have a really friendly group, so it's too bad Penny is leaving tomorrow. She's a four-month-old golden doodle. Yeah, I saw the video. <laughs> She's been really great. Hi. Am I distracting you? Oh, good sit. Good job. Oh. So what are some of the things that you wanted to work on with Finn? So you want to try to stay out of that yard? Over here. <laughs> <laughs> all those signs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think the biggest thing we want, to we want is recall, leash training, off the leash training, and implied what to stay, what to Like, so if we tell him to stay, uh -huh. like, so Finn, come here. Finn. Finn, come. Come. Oh, nice. Good. That's usually the hardest one yeah, for puppies so anyways. It's a hard one sometimes for pups to settle down. Yeah. And okay, come. Come. So one one thing that I can help you ladies with um, just from uh, observing yeah. is just um, Learning to do kind of things in order. Okay. A lot of times, excuse me. A lot of times with uh, with pups, it's a lot like math. Okay, you have to kind of learn the requisite steps before moving on. So if you don't have like you know adding and subtracting in, you can't move on to multiplying and things like that. So the only problem that I kind of see right now and that's an easy one for me to diagnose looking from like the outside in mm -hmm. is just the fact that you guys are kind of giving him commands without getting his attention right so you're asking him to sit okay. or stay which he actually does really well and you'll see in the video as soon as he actually focuses on you yeah. so the main thing is we don't move on to the next step until we get that first step down Right. right, so distractions right now, right? Or kind of. So like it's it's partly him being distracted in the environment and it's partly like us recognizing that. Like it's it's not time to give the command yet because we don't have the focus. Okay. And so what ends up happening here is and you'll you'll see it in the video when we, you replay it, which is which is part of the reason why I do the videos, even to watch myself when I'm like working with dogs, is you'll kind of see that you're asking him to sit, you're asking him to sit, you're asking him to sit. You're putting all this effort into the command, where you actually need to put more effort into getting his attention so first. We'll work on that, <laughs> right? But you see what I mean? No, absolutely. Like, so I can keep saying it, and he doesn't right. do it. But when he when finally he focuses on me, right. he does sit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So instead of asking him to sit repeatedly, maybe ask, like, try to get his name out again, right. so like get his attention back, right? So instead of moving on to step two, go back to step one until step one is good, and then do step two. Right. That's all. So that's gonna be, like I said, it's especially with puppies, like. 
very energetic, very easily distracted because everything is new, everything is very interesting. So it's going to be really important to try to figure out how we can be interesting, you know, how we can be engaging, how we can be fun. It's so exciting. Right. <laughs> we get tired. It's, it's hard. And that's why you... We're trying to be the distraction so it comes to us. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to like, um, to keep, especially with puppies, training sessions fun and short, yeah. right? Oh, good. <laughs> Here, let's go ahead and do like a, a casual walk around the neighborhood to kind of see what his recall and his leash behaviors are like. I have a feeling I already kind of know what the problem is with the recall, <laughs> right? We have to kind of build up like that first step a little bit more, him like hearing his name and being like, oh, I know what that means. It means somebody is calling me and I should pay attention to them. Right. He, he might have it on like a good like borderline level, but if you're not used to practicing it, like where there are a lot of distractions, right? Then it's just the training isn't up to um, where we want it to be yet. That's all. It's not that he doesn't know his name. It's so just these training like uh -huh. what we've done is just basically if he if he pulls, we stop. Okay. And then we wait for him to come back to us. Oh, okay. Um, But he'll he'll choke himself. Aww. <laughs> when he's excited, like when we went to the winery yesterday, like when he had to, like she left me to go in the building, and he was uh -huh. like, "I'm going, I'm going with her." <laughs> right. And how did that eventually like resolve itself? Did he give up, or did she come out? He gave up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he gives up eventually. That one was a strong one. And you'll have to remind me, have you had puppies before? Is it like this? Okay. What are his favorite treats or toys? Um, we bought a couple of toys with us. Um, he likes any kind of treats. I mean, um, we bought, me and we'll even do it for kibble. Okay. Um, he does, he likes like, soft plant, he likes anything. Okay. <laughs> he'll eat anything, he'll eat anything. Gotcha. Do you guys have like your treat bag with you? We bought all of the food with us. We didn't, I don't think we forgot treats. We forgot treats. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to kind of like get a more real world example yeah. of like how you generally will work with them. So when we, we do, they're just tiny treats that are, um, I don't know, are they nuggets? Okay. Uh -huh. and that they crumble, so trying to keep it close to us. Nice. So he would stay. So, so here, something interesting happened, right? So she asked for his name. He paused for a moment, you know, and then went back to what he was doing. And good and bad things, right? Good was that she tried to get his attention and he did pause for a moment. Bad was that like, after that initial part from both ends, there wasn't anything, like I said, it comes, kind of goes back to engagement afterwards. Like he went back to whatever he was doing and then she kind of just let it go. Like he um, didn't have to execute on the come command, right? Um, and that's one thing that, you know, we don't have to be super strict all the time or most of the time, but like when, when we request something, it'll be really important so that the dog just doesn't learn to ignore our commands, that we have to follow through, either with continuing to try, keeping them from doing something else until they execute, or, you know, the, the corrective, you know, measures or whatnot. Um, but the, the worst thing that, that can happen pretty much, you know, happens sometimes, and it's just giving him a command and then nothing happening. Because what ends up happening in that respect is just the fact that he starts conditioning himself to be like, oh, I hurt them, but I, I don't have to check back 
because nothing happened either way. Like, she she didn't have, you know, a treat or something for him to be rewarded by. Even, like, a good boy or something like that would have been good, like, recognition. Um, but then also, nothing also bad happened to, like, you know, punish him to just going right back without coming and listening first, right? And these things, you know, they're, they're really small at first, but they, they build up over time, just right. like behavior-wise, and it can end up getting frustrating for her, right, if he only listens some of the time. Some of the time, right. And then also for, for dogs, especially when it comes to things like recall, it gets really dangerous because, you know, if they listen 50% of the time and a car is coming, yeah. you know, that's not the best odds that you want to be playing with, right? So what we can do in this case is the next time that you want his attention, go ahead and, and say his name. I'll give you one of my treats, right? And if he like pays attention and stops and comes back after you, after you say his name, call him back to you and just a good boy, give him some uh, pets and praise. And if you want, you can give him a treat, right? So we'll just keep walking. And then when he's distracted, just say his name. And then when he refocuses, it's gonna be your mark moment. And then after he refocuses on you, ask him to come for you and then give him a reward for executing. So don't move on until you got his attention from that. Right? Right? Not yet. <laughs> it's okay. It's hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, that's why we don't move on to step two without ex like getting step one down. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the puppy teething. Ben. <laughs> So Finn and then Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Alright. So we'll start off with some name conditioning. And I'll help you out. So right, you can see how hard it is to get him to do something if you can't even get his attention, and that's understandable. So it's like where we need to work on for number one. Luckily for you guys, and I was just telling the uh the other pet parent, the same thing. Once you get the focus part down, everything else is so much easier. Like when you got his focus and you asked him to sit, he understood and he executed right away, right? So the, the one thing that we'll probably have to start doing is working backwards, right? So getting his attention first was something that he might like. Good boy, right? So now he knows that I have something and he wants it. <laughs> so now when I say his name, it's gonna get his attention, and then I mark, and then I reward. So it just reminds him, oh, hey, that person actually has something that I want. All right, so we'll try it one more time. Good boy. All right, now he's just going through the motions, right? Because he's used to getting treats for sitting, he's like, oh, I, I like that. I'll do this, right, and I'll get the treat, right? <laughs> Okay. Right? So now we have to teach him what he can do to get that treat because he wants it. He's trying to figure out how to get it, how to get the reward. Mm -hmm. right. Now I'll show him, right? All he has to do to, to get what he wants is to listen and refocus. And I have just, all I have to do at this point is wait for him to lose his focus and then get it back. Finn. Yes, good boy, right? So he was trying everything under the sun to get that treat, but the, uh, the one thing that got him the treat was hearing that sound, refocusing, and then immediately rewarding. So that marking that behavior, like getting that timing down, right? Once again, and we'll have her do it next. <laughs> He's like, I know what's going on. Oh, there's some other smells. Finn. Yes. Good. Oh. 
We'll do it one more time and then we'll have you guys try. Okay, and we'll just walk. <laughs> good boy. Yes, good boy. Good job, Finn. Yes. Good. So now the, the cogs are starting to turn, right? We're starting to add value to that name yeah. just by immediately doing something after something happens, right? <laughs> Good boy. Yeah, I got a couple different treats yeah. here for you. Yeah? All right. Oh, sorry, that one. <laughs> All right, so then just walk as normal and then as soon so make sure you have his attention first, because we're going to work backwards here. We want him to know what he's working for. Okay. Almost. <laughs> there you go. Good. So he already paid attention. You can give him one to start off with, but then let him know there's another one. Yeah. And now work backwards. So as soon as he stops paying attention, you say his name. And as soon as he pays attention, right? Good boy. Right there. There. Good, see? All right, so a little bit of practice, a little bit of conditioning, All right? So now he knows that we have something that he's interested in, actually more Finn. Finn. perfect there. Good, All right? So now we have something to help against the environment. Um, it's always gonna be hard because when we don't have something, and it doesn't always have to be treats, it could be balls, it could be praise, it can be anything. But that's the thing, like we have to have something to start off with. And we definitely skip that. Yeah. And we're just like, fit, come, fit, come. Because <laughs> then you're in like that forcing mode, yes. right? Yes. And, it, and, it's... and then we get frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that'll be the first first lesson for free and you'll you'll see us practicing that and then once we get from there the <laughs> I'll do videos on other things but um, yeah so you want her to try and then we can move on to the next thing that you guys want worked on so here is a beef liver and then here's a couple of chicken these are all freeze-dried treats but yeah there you go right <laughs> good and this is a lot better for most people. Like, and I'll teach everybody how to wean off of treats, but the, the main thing is getting focused first. Perfect, there you go, right? Because a lot of times we get frustrated because we can't get their attention, so that way we can ask them yeah, to do something. A simple thing that we've overlooked. And now we're just working backwards. We have his attention. <laughs> we have his attention more than anything else in in the environment and to get it back we just use his name perfect there right there that was perfect good job very good good cool you have any questions on the first one that's a big no, I mean, it's a big was, one i mean that we totally just would so we, we we would play a game with him when he was a baby that he would run back and forth to us there you go. Just saying his name. So mm -hmm. he would come to his name. But then we just never reinforced it. We weren't thinking that he wasn't we weren't getting his attention. That was perfect. Yeah, that's exactly the huh? And like I said, the the goal will be to make it so the whole family works well together. Sometimes it's training the dog, sometimes it's helping the people, sometimes it's it's a little bit of both. It just really depends on the situation. But my goal is to see where his point of failure is and then how can he succeed. And that was pretty easy because he listened to you when you asked him to sit and down, but that was because he had your attention. So his point of failure and your part of frustration was just the fact that he couldn't get his attention to get to that point. Huh? And recall, unfortunately, is that times a lot, right? right, right. So general recall is going to be like um, three Ds, distance, which covers the other ones, duration. When do you, yes. So like distance is easy because the further away that you are from the dog, the harder it is because the t like the distance that they have to travel, they're going to go through more distractions, right? 
Um, duration is hard, especially for puppies, because they get bored. They don't want to sit still. They want something to do. They don't know what's going on, right? Uh, it's, it's the exact opposite of what he wants to do right now, which is to play and engage and have a good time. And you're just like, no, bud, stay. I don't want to stay. <laughs> this is so boring, right? Um, and then distractions. Stay. Oh, there's a ball. Oh, there's another dog. Oh, mom's walking away. And that's another thing that throws off a lot of people is they don't understand sometimes that inadvertently they're pushing boundaries without even knowing it. So you're asking him to stay and then you're walking away. He's like, wait, where are you going? Right? So we're actually making it harder for him before building any of the structure. Oh yeah. So we live, um, we have a, a fenced in, a very large backyard. Oh cool. And he's pretty good about, the front of his life, he's pretty good about that. Okay. Um, so we've been training him also to sit in his best nation. Uh -huh. So that he doesn't run away, but uh, he will. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because he just gets interested in something yeah. else? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it's actually pretty cool. He doesn't, like, we open the door to go out in the garage, and he doesn't run to get out of that house. That's uh, good. He sits, yeah, he sits there and waits for us. But that is my fear, right? That's mm -hmm. the, he's just going to take off and then have to go like that. Okay. And, like, um, what are your end goals with him? Because that can also shape uh, the training process. Uh, for example, I have some clients that like to go to like the dog beach, hiking, they're very active. So I recommend collar training. Uh, use like a GPS collar or something and I do tone training. So that way when they hear the beep, it's kind of like their name, they go back. The good thing about the collars with GPS is just the fact that now you have GPS coordinates on them and stuff. Um, and also, our voice drops off at distance a lot sooner than a lot of people expect. Whereas if he has something on him, yeah. that's always gonna be just as loud, right? And then also like the vibration is a physical sensation that helps to get his attention back. Yeah. Um, things like that. We don't usually use the static because we don't need to. We, you spend enough time conditioning, you know, positively, yeah, for them to come back. That, you know, even hunters they just do tone training sometimes right. with their dogs. And yes, so our goal with him is to take him everywhere, to go hiking with him, to go, like, really anywhere. He's already been to a lot of places, lot of places mm -hmm. and he's been to a hotel and did great. Um, but again, he's still, he's not, he's still a puppy, and the, the, you know, the, the leash and stuff, until he gets tired, you know, is really when he, he behaves better. Okay. He pulls, he pulls a lot, yeah. Okay, I saw a little bit of that. Let's try showcasing that again a little bit. So let's just walk him normally and I'll just kind of follow you behind and we'll see what's going on. You'd be surprised because pups will actually pull for different reasons too. Sometimes they'll actually just pull because they run out of leash, right? So a longer leash or a freedom leash will help because then by the time they get you know, to the next scent, you can catch up and there's no tension. Um, another big one with puppies is excitement. They'll be moving way faster than we do, so you just run out of leash and that causes the pulling. Um, the next biggest one with dogs is um, their nose. They'll have something on the ground and they're just tracking it, right? So they lose focus on where you are, how much leash that they have. They don't you know, know that at all. They get to the end of it, it starts pulling, right? To get to, to continue following the scent trail. Uh, another one here is distractions, right? He's interested in something that way, and she's still back over here, right? Good boy, good. Right? And so this just inadvertently causes the pull, having something more interesting than us that's outside of our leash range. Oh, he's not pulling too bad though. Good boy. <laughs> Sit 
gets him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good though. Like uh, it just shows like if you guys are consistent in what you're doing, he'll pick it up. But that's also the folly. Like if you're consistent in calling his name and then nothing happens, he'll pick that up. I think we're bad about not giving him treats like when we're walking with them, right? We always have treats in the house and we're teaching him. And then when we go out, that's when you actually you're like really need them, Probably right? Really need them, yeah. yeah. And and I'll teach you ways of weaning off of the treats, but especially in the beginning, it's always easier because it's less frustrating for us, and it's more rewarding for the dogs um, to give them something to work for. Like for example, we're really good about working for like 14 days straight, and then we get paid. Okay? <laughs> Doesn't work over very well with like children, yes. <laughs> right? And then even younger children or dogs that don't extend, like understand a concept. You, you keep asking them to do something, they do it. Keep asking them to do something, they do it. Eventually, you're, they're going to be like, "Why am I doing this?" <laughs> All right. So we have to like give them that in incentive. It's shorter for us and for dogs just because of the fact that um, it's the long-term game is a lot more kind of logically complex. Whereas the short term game, it's a lot easier to grasp and understand. Oh, it's like, oh, I sit, I get a treat. Now it's really easy for him to sit, right? Because he's made that connection. Now, if he made the connection that if you called his name and he gets a reward and he gets to hang out with you and have a good time and maybe get some treats or maybe play ball, like you can add in a lot of positive associations to it. It doesn't just have to be treats, right? But if he gets that association when he hears his name, then he's like, oh, I'm gonna go leave whatever that scent was. I'll come back to it later. She's calling me. I'm gonna go and hang out with her, right? So it's like anything else. Um, the payment is to help incentivize an action. I've trained plenty of shepherds just off of a ball before. I had one pup that just loved sticks. We'd literally just have sticks by our door. <laughs> so every single time we went out, and like, yeah, come on, let's go, right? Hey, he'll bring half yeah. a tree in the house. <laughs> well, they, there you go, right? And, and right, and they're like, how often have you tried working with sticks with them? There you go. Perfect, <laughs> right? And these are all good things for like me to know. I'll eventually pick them up along the way, but it's good for me to know during the training process, and then it's good for you guys to know, you know, just for his personality, what he likes, what he doesn't like, what he will work for, what he will ignore, and that way it'll make your lives a lot easier. How is he with other pups? Well, so he loves other dogs. But oh, perfect. He, but he's, but he's not aggressive. He's just, you know, he's bigger than them. He jumps on them, and then they, you know, the bigger ones used to like him when he was younger, but now they're getting a little bit more intimidated. Because yeah. he's bigger. Because he's getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, and like the things that we are afraid of is like when we go to like the wineries or we go to a farmer's market, like little kids, right? He's bad about jumping. He's, he's, he's bad about jumping on them because they're small. And then, uh -huh. Okay. So I, yesterday I just kind of held him back um, by his shoulders. All right. Let him get used to the little kid that the mom wanted to pet him. Ah, it's good and bad, right? Yeah, so yeah. the good part is he's excited. He yeah. wants to engage with little ones. The bad part is he's excited. He doesn't know how to control himself and he, he doesn't know, he does, he's not even thinking that he can accidentally knock them over and hurt them. He just wants to play with them. So that coincides with a lot of like usual puppy behavior that we work with, which is called impulse control, <laughs> right? That one also covers a lot of bases. And it's good that you were there and we'll have to start off that way with him too. It's like controlling him, right? By either holding the leash, ho holding him back, holding him physically back, all that yeah, stuff. I just did because I didn't want him to hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, if, it was, if it wasn't a kid, I, it would have been different. <laughs> like another person came up to him and he's like, "Can I pet your puppy?" And, I, and just kind of like when they met you, just, like, just let him go. Down and, just, and I just say, "Stay down, stay down." He does really right. good. But most people know to get down like this. Mm -hmm. It's the people that walk in our door. They're like, ah, ah, you know, <laughs> so, "Right." Having a command to keep them at bay, <laughs> you know, in place, you know, when somebody walks in our door. Yeah. A command is good, and. uh the 
the reason behind the command would be even better and it's just for him to learn to control himself when he's excited and that's one of the hardest things for puppies yeah. right is because they can do all the things most of the time that we we train them to do it's whether they're distracted or they're too excited to focus to execute those commands is going to be most of the problem and then with jumping that is almost always the excited part they're just always too excited right to to focus on what they should be doing you know they should, they should be sitting when we ask to sit or they should be staying down when ask is down but he's just so excited that those things are just like flying over his head so if we could continue i mean some of mm -hmm. it's just puppy stuff right it's, he's just gonna get older we will, control him now. Yeah, we we want to try to mature him as quickly as possible, yeah. but I'm not going to be able to send you home a six-year-old dog. <laughs> I just like to try to get these things like as like upfront about it as possible. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the understanding, right, is like instead of just trying to hold back his energy, actually getting him to control himself and his energy is going to help with like his like self-production and like progress more than anything else. We can tell him to sit and wait, but if he just sits and waits without us telling him because he's thinking about a situation, that's the goal, yeah. right? Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> he's like, this is boring. <laughs> Finn. Nope. So what I'm looking for in that instance is because he's distracted by something right there, I was looking for his ears or something to like twitch, like a twitch response when hearing his voice. So he's not paying attention now to have you say his name once clearly. Finn. Perfect, good. Yes. Yeah. Boy. Right, now he's like, oh wait, he's got the treats. <laughs> that was good. All right, so now I'll wait for him to not pay attention we'll have mom say it. Finn. Finn. Too much. It's okay. He's too distracted to hear, right? So we'll just wait until he's in like a neutral state. Finn. Finn. Yep. Now I'll give the treat to her. And now I'll just wait again. Let him kind of get distracted. Finn. Perfect. <laughs> Condition. He's not conditioned enough. Yeah, no, he he's probably conditioned that. enough from listening to her and feeling yes. rewarded. Yes. Yeah, it's. We're gonna start from square one with this guy and work our way up. It looks like, but that's okay. It, it happens a lot. Usually, it's only the first couple days that we do name work. And I'll, I'll keep you posted. But well, like I said, it's usually all downhill from there anyway. So. He needs a new name. Let us know. <laughs> That can make it even worse. I had one family before that they would, you know, their dog is named one thing, but then they usually, yeah, and then they would usually use the nickname. But then when they needed his attention, they would use the official name. Like we do with kids, yeah. Like, no, use the nickname. That's the one that he associates with. It's... Uh, because my, my husband gives, like, nicknames. Like, we say pup, right? We say... Finny. Yeah. And they use Finn for... There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, oh, my girlfriend's dog is a good example, right? If you do that, you just have to do it cognitively. Like, you have to understand that you're doing it. Pepper will respond to Dr. Pepper, pepperoni, pepper pots. Yep. She will respond to anything that starts with pep. Uh, right? right? <laughs> because that's what we worked on. Right. Right? So, uh, uh, like, Finn, Finnegan, Finlandia, yeah. uh... Finny. <laughs> Finn. Right? Oh, good boy. Good boy. Oh, leaf. Uh, there it goes. <laughs> Movement, right? Distraction. Finn. Right? Not, not enough value. Okay. It is what it is. Oh, did you get a leaf? What? No. We can't have this. We can't have this. Right? All right. Um... So recall, definitely the name, some leash work. Any anything else on the the video you guys want to showcase? Just the like. So you had said you're telling him to stay and you're walking away. That that's not a good. 
Right. So I think he, he stays. It's not a good thing because second. he doesn't understand, understand it. it right? Yeah. So he stays, and then, but it's not implied to continue to stay. So there's no release, basically. We're, yes. We're looking for, like, how That's good. You release him. Most of the time, you actually have to work on the release as opposed to the stay, because if he knows what to listen for when he's staying, then he's actually you actually gave him something to right. do when he's staying. He's attentively listening for that release command, yeah. which is perfect. And he does it in the car. He's pretty good about, mm -hmm. like, she'll say, like, he'll wait for us to put the leash on, and we'll say free, he'll jump out. Oh. Same thing with oh, the free. Okay. He's good with free, and he'll come out. Um, but not these words is free. Yeah. Huh. But he doesn't um, doesn't do it anywhere else. Like it's only in those places. And That's probably where it works. Place I've been trying to extend it today. Do you think it's because he's comfortable and familiar with those places so there's less distractions? That's breaking his day? Probably, probably yeah. 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 Some of that is just socializing, right? Getting out and about with him so that way he gets to see the world and gets to like experience these things so everything isn't so super new and exciting that it's, you know, and that just, that's one of those things that I can try, you know, to get him a good head start on, but it's just gonna yeah, come just with it, time yeah. as well. But That's why we're, we take him, like I said, everywhere. That's perfect. Um, oh, but going back to like, what is your end goal for him staying for an extended period of time? I only ask because the canine good citizenship test asks for a stay for 30 yards and then release, uh -huh. which I find is very interesting because I've never needed my dogs to like stay, stay for that. I and think, yeah. like when I work with uh, special needs and service dogs, we usually just have them temp stay with us when you're like shopping, for example, and you're just looking at a shelf. If you ever notice, what well, you might now. Um, what'll happen is they're walking with their pup, they stop to examine something, they stop, their pup stops, and they sit and stay without the handler being told, right? It's just normal. They shop around and then they start moving, their pup starts moving. That's the kind of stay because I'm here doing this, I want you here with me kind of stay. Right? Or is it a uh, stay because I want you here and now I want you to go and get something and then come back? Like, what what reason do you guys so, want from him for an extended yeah, stay? So that definitely, like if we're going shopping or in a store with him or whatever. But I think to us is like, if we want him to stay in his place okay. because someone's coming in the door. Uh, just that might be a good thing. Instead of him getting all excited and jumping, he, he stays and waits. I don't know if that's realistic or not. No, that's good. Right. right. So it's good that he stays and waits, but it's bad that it also doesn't necessarily tie in with his excitement. Because I've had, oh, we're running out of time. We've had pups before that sit and stay, but they're still excited. So when, as soon as that person, grandma, gets close to him, yeah. he jumps up it's on her anyways, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know, you have to think about what your focus should actually be. Is it him not jumping? Is it him staying calm? Is it him staying down? Because him just staying in a spot, you, exactly. You can just be coiling up a, a spring, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, and and I'll, I'll I'll evaluate and work with him on these things. But I just want you guys to to like think about these things so that way when I'm working with him, to have like realistic expectations that we can actually practice and go through. Because I like doing things like staying because we're gonna have to look both ways before we cross the street. Right. So staying, check, check, a little bit amount of time, I'm still right next to him. I start again, he goes, right? So that's like a more real world kind of like stay, right? Yeah, and just like I said, the active part of the leash and taking him Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna go <laughs> and uh, grab a long lead real quick and I'll let you guys say goodbye to them and everything because it's starting to rain. Um, was there anything else you kind of wanted to go over? You can always touch base with me again, but I don't want everybody to get wet and sick. And I think we have like, kind of the basis down. Cool. Do uh, I do not. So we are good. We have a, a, bed, a soft bed if you want it, want it or not. Sure. Or a place we'd like to be familiar with. I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. And then a bag of food and what you'd like to fix and that's it.
All right, what I'll do is I'm gonna go and I'll pause this right, clip this on to him and I'll let you take off the other one. Good sit, there you go. All right, so now go ahead and start walking in one direction, see what he does. Good boy. Yep. So that's good, right? He's like, hey, where y'all going? I wanna come with? Right, so pros and cons, right? Not too much of a flight risk because he didn't just leave you guys there or start running off the other way. But it also goes over why you have difficulty with stick, right? Especially if you're gonna be leaving him behind, right? Because he naturally wants to come with you. Okay, go ahead, just keep walking. We wanna see what happens when, um, right, good. So he's checking in, now he's just getting distracted. And this is usually what ends up getting a lot of puppies in trouble, right? They start to drift because they find something interesting and they follow that trail, they follow that trail, they get something else and then they follow that trail and then before they even realize it, they don't know where mom and dad are or mom and sister or mom, mom and daughter, sorry. All right, you guys know where I was going. All right. So now go ahead and start walking back the other way and don't call and we'll see what happens. Good boy. Go ahead and catch him. <laughs> oh, good job. Okay. So that kind of coincides with his personality, what I've seen, and the problem that you've had with, with Stay. The good thing is, you know, he you definitely have that bond and he's gonna go through whatever distraction is back to you. So recall might not be as difficult as you think. It's just when you're trying to prompt the recall because his name isn't there, right? So now when he's ready to go back and be free, he doesn't have that like, that trigger to like, oh, I gotta come back to mom and dad now. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. Yeah. Um, that's encouraging. I think, and that's our biggest that's good. Like, you know, like, you know, like, oh, no, they just turn <laughs> off and we're not gonna be able to get him back. <laughs> and, and it can still happen, like I said, if he, you know, didn't get line of sight for you guys for long enough and everything, because he did check out for quite a while. <laughs> he didn't cry or anything. He didn't, like, because I've had pups before, as soon as mom and dad left, they were like, nope, <laughs> right? I'm going to. No, no, it's good. It's it's good natural behavior. He wants to explore, right? He's got his own tendencies, and he pulls because you run out of leash. You kind of see what I mean now? It's just he was following that scent, and he's like, oh, why why are we not going that way? Now he's checking back in with you guys. No, he's he's definitely got all the all the footprints of a of a good puppy for sure. Oh, good boy, right? Oh, no, you're you're gonna be great, big guy. I, you know. Ah, you're gonna be great. All right, cool. No, well, that was it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, I'll go ahead. Yeah, I'll let him bring you guys back to the car and you can clip him back in. Oh, good boy. <laughs> good boy. What a good boy. Look at that. He actually likes the car. So. Oh, that could be it too, right? That's good. He's probably going in. Uh, yeah. no, that's perfect. We'll be riding in the car a lot, so yeah. that'll be good for him. Um, yeah, so I'll let you go ahead and hang out with him. Um, I'm going to take the leash back inside and get the other pups ready. Feel free to pull up in front, and then I'll come. What I'll do first, and I'll go ahead and pause this. All right, so first up, we have Miss Penny. Unfortunately, she'll be leaving tomorrow, but it seems like uh, both of these guys are going to get along just fine. Oh my goodness, okay. All right, well, oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, he's had no problems at all meeting every, oh, good girl, good potty. Good girl. 
meeting the other members of the pack. Good girl, good boy. Yes, you did good, good job. Just seems very excited. Wasn't scared. Wasn't confrontational or anything. So, no issues right off the bat for the socializing. Even with his other boarding roommate that was afraid of pups and a bit reactive, they actually didn't snap at him through the, through the crate, which was really good to see. They'll probably get along pretty quickly as well. <laughs> we'll go ahead and let them play for a little bit. Keep an eye on traffic. She just peed, so she should be okay. And all I'm looking for here is any uh, escalations or anything like that, sensitivities for them. Any humping behaviors or how well he listens to her if she yelps. Just keeping an eye on all the all the incoming traffic. Or actually let's go let's go down this way. I was gonna go to the grass over there, but we'll We'll use the grass behind the, behind the townhouses instead. Oh. If we can get there. Good girl. She got distracted by the kids. Yes, good girl. <laughs> All right. We'll go ahead and uh, and walk in with the other pups to see how how they are. I think everybody will be okay. This will also give everybody else a, a chance for a bathroom break before it hopefully starts raining or not raining. <laughs> Next up we have Miss Luna, her sibling Cloud. It is starting to rain, so I'll only do uh, one one more pup, the other board and train, Miss Poppy. So that way we all don't get soaked. And then I'll do my old ladies either another time or I'll just uh, <laughs> show them. They've actually been all good inside, so <laughs> Cloud looks like he wants to play as well. Boy. This way we got the boy. It's very respectful of the of the older pups, which is really good. Good girl, good pee pee. So here the the leash pulling because he's excited going forward moving faster than we are following his nose oh boy Good job cloud Do you like a treat? I know, Cloud likes his treats. Finn. Good boy. Good 
circuitry. Good job. Alright. A little calmer. Still well behaved though. Cloud looks like he wants to play with him. <laughs> I know, good boy. It's now raining. So we won't be out too long. Good job. Girl. Alright. All right, we'll start heading back to Miss Poppy so she can have a potty break too. Good boy. Oh yeah, there it comes. All right. And the thing with Cloud is he seems a lot more intense than he really is. He doesn't actually make hard contact or if any contact when he's doing that. And then he'll go into like a play bow. He can be very fast and he can be very loud. He can throw off some people and pups. But you learn once you kind of get adjusted to his play style and his intensity, you're, you're okay. <laughs> Good job. Oh, this way, Cloud. Good boy. Uh oh. Good boy. Very good. Go ahead and do the next pup. Wait. Good girl. Ah, come. Good boy. Good job. Right. And lastly here we have Poppy. She's staying because she's scared of other dogs. Right? Good boy. Okay, good girl. And him being a very friendly puppy can be beneficial for her to see that even though he has a lot of energy and he's lacking some of the social manners that he still doesn't mean her any harm. Good girl. Right? So it'll be my goal here to help teach him some social manners and help her make space whenever necessary. So that way she can have the time that she needs to be comfortable around him. Gotta be careful for this car coming up. Good. Very good. There you go. And then she's curious. Good. So she gets to smell him. Good job. We'll wait for them to pass. Good boy, Finn. So certain behavior is like sitting for the treat. You can go ahead and continue to reward that. It's a good habit that he's he's kind of made for himself. So we'll go build on that habit as much as we can. Boy, you can tell Finn is definitely checking out everything that's going on, but he's not as unsure as Miss Poppy. Whereas Poppy tends to kind of linger, investigate a little bit more. Finn is kind of more interested back in Poppy or the sense. Good job. Come on. Good. Come on. Good girl. Have to work with Poppy here on sharing space and treats, right? Ah, uh, ah, uh. oh, Finn. So Finn. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. Finn. Finn. Wait. There you go. Good. <laughs> so I gotta teach him some patience as well, so that way he's not trying to take take things that are hers. But at the same time, it's good because it'll get her more comfortable with him being in. Good girl, you're okay. Being in his space, right? Recognizing that there's no threat or anything to worry about outside of maybe losing a finger to a treat. There you go, good. 
It's okay. Good girl. Alright, so him being friendly and curious pretty much goes right up against her wanting personal space and being scared. But this is how they learn from one another. Good girl. It's important, you know, even when you don't get along with somebody or don't like their personality, especially with dogs, that they still are able to be cordial and coexist. Right. So I'll be correcting her if she oversteps her boundaries and then I'll also be correcting Finn if necessary for not listening to her when she's asking for space. So it's a mutual mutual relationship here we're gonna go for. Right? <laughs> Good boy. This way. Oh, okay. Good girl. Good people. Just trying to get her to not pee on the yard there. That's okay. All right. Come on, big guy. You can kind of see there, he hopped up a little bit. He's excited, wanted a treat. You can see he's per persistent too but he's he's learning to listen which is really good and poppy's learning to relax a little bit even when he's right next to her that's really good to see there you go good okay. yeah and he's just kind of pulling through the leash pressure following his nose going where he wants to go she slows down a little bit when she feels it. So, gonna need to do some leash pressure training with him. Getting him used to understanding the pressure and what to do when it happens. Good job. Is your collar bugging you, bud? Good girl, it's okay. He was a little too brave there, huh? A little, a little bit too much. It's okay. okay. He just wants to play. Okay. So she gave him an opportunity there to let him know that was a little bit too much. So now if he does it again, I'm gonna go ahead and help her out with that. Make, move him away a little bit so she doesn't, there you go, feel the need to overreact and snap again. Get a couple warnings, big guy, that's all. She's very much so interested in everything that's going on. Alright. Alright, we'll do one more. Come here. Uh-uh, no. Good girl. There you go. Good job, big guy. <laughs> 